Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing some very simple mic making to make a quick um, art journaling layout page. This is a double page in my Dina Wakely journal. I'm just going in with some gesso and being quite generous with it and spreading it out around the background. Now usually when I put on gesso I do a really thin layer but I knew on this page I wanted to um, actually scribe into the gesso and make some marks um, into the paint itself. So I was a little bit more generous than I usually am. Probably didn't need to put as much on as I did but you can see the texture that's built up and now I'm scraping some of it off so even then I knew I put too much on. So now all I'm doing is just mixing in some night paint again from the Dina Rakeley range and I'm not being too particular I haven't cleaned my brush I'm just wiping into the paint just to mix it in not being too careful about how it goes just getting this sort of really nice hue going across the page once I've finished with that I've got my use it up journal and I'm just painting off the extra paint into my use it up journal now the paint on my paintbrush is actually quite thick because it is quite wet there so it's a good way to make sure that you have used up all your paint that you're not wasting anything um, <clears throat> so I'm just gently drying it I'm not drying it the full way because I want to scribe into it I'm using my Stabilo oil pencil to do this and I'm just doing some really really simple scribbly mark making in the background so squiggly lines um, shapes and all sorts. Now the bonus about using a Stabilo or pencil is one, well you could use anything to do this, um, a sharp pencil, the back of your paintbrush, anything that will scribe into the paint. But by having the Stabilo or pencil it is water activated so you get this slight tint of black on the edges and you can see sort of when I'm dabbing it on you can get that blackness coming off. So it just gives you an, another edge to what you're doing. You also see on my um, paper at the edge um, to protect the other pages I'm sort of scraping off the background paint off my pencil just so it doesn't get too clogged up on it. Once I've finished doing my mark making I go in and I'm drying it off. Now um, this will take slightly longer to dry because the paint was put on much thicker but it just gives you that beautiful texture in the background when you're scraping down to the back layer. I'm also making sure that I'm uh, testing to make sure that the page is actually dry. Um, sometimes, particularly where it's thick, it um, does take a little while to dry, so just be aware where you're, you're practicing it. So this figure is a page out of Collage Collective that you just saw me put away. And it's a double, uh, it's a book from Dina Wakely. It's got beautiful images from her artwork in it that you can cut out and use in your own artwork. And you can see it's double sided. There is two images of each in the book. One's in paperweight and one is in um, cardboard weight. So be aware that there are the different weights in the book. I had an idea that I was going to put this on the page too um, and I decided against it in the end because I really loved the simplicity of that face and the mic making in the background. At this stage when I was doing these journal pages I was actually stripping back what I was doing on my journal pages instead of my usual try and throw everything on the page I was actually trying to be a little bit more restrained. And you can see if I tried to do that, it wouldn't have worked. I like the idea of turning it into a crown, but it just didn't work with the colours on this page. And I think that's because I used the blues in the background. It's such a calm colour that um, having something else with contrasting colours on it just really wouldn't have worked in all that well. One of the things I do love to do with any collage image though, but particularly with faces, is to go back in and draw over the lines with um, a pencil or a pen and just get my hand on the page. One, it's really good for me to practice drawing faces because um, it's just getting my hand into that movement. But two, it just adds a little bit more to the page. You can see those darker lines of where I've sort of scribbled into it. Um, just adds a bit more interest to that image and makes it pop out of the page a little bit more than just the flat image. I'm also going over now the page as dry as my all pencil again and sort of scribing into some of the marks that I had to get some extra black on the page to sort of tie the two pages together a little bit more so you've got the sort of scribbly lines on both pages. 
So now I'm going in with my food ball and doing some journaling on the figure and I'm using some really loose handwriting. Um, Dina Wakely, or this is called Asemic Writing, which is non-legible writing. It's got the form of sort of letters, but it's not really legible. I have written on that. I've done this so long ago now, I can't remember what I wrote. But when I was writing it, I was writing words. But if I tried to go back and read them now, it wouldn't necessarily read to me as words. So I, as I was doing this, I decided I just wanted to do something really simple. So I um, went onto Pinterest and found a quote um, to fill um, the empty page on the left hand side. So um, I'm using these alphabet stamps from Scrap FX. They're foam stamps. They're really handy to have because you can see the letter really quick, clearly. So it's good for sort of working out where they come. Um, it does actually all come on one row and I've cut them apart, which I personally find easier to, to work with. Um, and so I can kind of work out the spacing as I go along. A lot of people will sort of start with the first letter and the last letter and sort of work in between to get to the middle letter. Um, I just chance it and hope. And if it doesn't quite work and I have to stamp into the image, well, that's what I have to do. The other thing about um, using these foam stamps is you can kind of bend it around corners. Uh, this page was done nearly at the end of my journal, so where it got towards the spine, it is quite um, full. Um, so if I was doing it with a normal stamp, I would take it off the block so I could roll it around the edge as well. So just be aware when you're stamping, there are ways to get around stamping into tricky spots. So the quote is, fill my pages with the breathings of my heart. And I just thought it summed up perfectly that beautiful image on the one side, that really simple mic making in the background. And this page just made me really, really happy. So one thing I did do, and I tend to do this a lot with um, quotes or when I've written out um, a focal saying, is to go back in with a white Posca paint pen and to put in some shadowing around it. It just helps it to pop off the page a little bit more. And my rule of thumb for doing shadows is to do everything on the bottom left hand corner of the image. And having that little rule in my head means hopefully, in most cases, I get it really consistent across the whole page instead of, sort of swapping with each page. I then go in with the white pen and do some extra journaling around the image just to sort of tie it all in together. So this is the final close-up of the page. It was really, really simple. I love doing mic making into um, a wet background and it just adds some extra texture to your page that you're not expecting. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.